And we are live. This is the two bosses screen script reading that we are recording on Google Meet. It is Saturday, March 13th, and we have most of the cast on here, which is amazing. People from all around the country. We have Seattle in the house, Georgia, Toronto. Uh, Kellen, you're in Alabama, right? Uh, no, I'm in Georgia. And Georgia and Kelly in Florida. Oh, yeah. And John Gettier in Atlanta. And we should have some more uh, joining shortly, so we'll try it out. But without further ado, let us begin. All right. The keys are hung up. Clearly stressed, C pours beer into his glass from a can and lights a cigar. In mid-thought, taking a deep breath. Where the fuck's your guy at? What? He told me he was going to give me a call back in an hour. I don't know. Where the fuck he's at? Who does that shit? With us? We're talking 90,000 fucking dollars. The cell phone rings. Speak of the fucking devil. News about the coronavirus plays. And C narrates. Never in a million years did I ever think I would die from a virus. A bullet? Yeah. But a virus? It's been almost a year. My brother and I have been stuck in this fucking rental down here in Georgia since April. Rocky is seen writing on a notepad. This coronavirus shit has mutated into something nobody saw coming. We both got diagnosed with corona in March, and we beat it in April. It's December, and doctors say we're evidently suffering from this stage two shit. There's a little coughing, a little sneezing. It's whatever. Things have gotten so bad that we have military roaming the streets, making sure no one is out and about. They'll shoot anybody found outside, no questions asked. i seen this shit with my own eyes. It's that bad. The death toll since February is like 4.2 million or some shit. And what's worse is that even with all the money, including the special privileges that my brother and I have, we're still not allowed anywhere. See, Rocky and I operate one of the largest illegal operations in the country. Legitimately. Rocky and I own eight of the largest investment firms in the nation, with our two biggest being in Seattle and New York. So obviously, when all of this shit erupted, you best fucking believe we decided to lay low in our loft in Georgia so that we could not only have a safe space, but we could also work with our partners in Florida. We've got Mickey in the east and Christy in the west. They're each responsible for handling four of our eight companies, making sure we stay ahead of the feds, the CIA, and especially our competitors. Now, these two make look sweet, but I promise you, Rocky and I handpicked them specifically for a number of reasons. Mickey now manages $3.2 billion of our profit sharing, investments, and laundering. He's a numbers guy who doesn't take no for a fucking answer. And Christy? Fucking forget about it. The last time a potential partner told her no and to go fuck her offer, she sent him his assistant's cock bow tied with a note within an hour. He signed a deal the next day and resigned as CEO a week later. Rocky and I knew that Seattle and New York were going to be obvious gold mines. As two latchkey kids born and raised in the Bronx, raising themselves on the streets with no education, you only have three options in life. Die, survive, or build an empire. A quick glimpse into the outside world is shown. Trees, tree stumps, police tape over playgrounds. Rocky and C get ready as they would normally given any other day. Showering, brushing teeth, shaving, and even putting on nice clothes. They're seen having strenuous phone conversations and checking on bank accounts online. It is now January 15th, 2021, National Quarantine Release Day, and C is driving. There's a difference between running a multi-billion dollar organization and running, our multi and running our multi-billion dollar organization. We've met most of the billionaires in the world, except for maybe Amancio Ortega and the Cokes. You see, we all share similar ideals and ventures. Most of us run conglomerates, including subsidiaries and in massive industries, ranging from fashion, tech, fibers and minerals, to strip clubs, adult film, shit, down to fucking chewing gum companies, really. The boring shit is easy. Rocky and I, however, know that longevity becomes a dying fad if not managed correctly. Owning a brokerage firm solidified our spot in the game. So now you're asking yourself the million dollar question. What separates us from them? C plays a video on his phone of someone being thrown off of a building, and we cut the scene. 
we always win. We cut to the morning as C is having his morning tea. C's telephone rings and it's Joey D. In a calm voice, Joey D, who's no longer present today, says, C, that thing is done. I saw. The money's already in your account. You did send that video through SX101, correct? Of course. Also, I heard Gloria Bianco has been looking for you. Where's she at now? He takes a deep breath. Still here in New York. C, in a serious, calm tone, I need you to go see her and do some gardening. Gardening is code for killing. As soon as. Joey D. Understanding C's code of death. You need me to plant some trees, too? Referencing to burying bodies. As many as she has. Joey D. says, done, and hangs up. C sips his tea quietly at the table. Rocky is sitting at the dining room tables, sipping his drink. He sits his drink down and with a deep look in his eyes takes a breath. And C narrates. It's been five days since the national quarantine release day. And guess who's COVID decide to mutate to a stage three? It don't fucking matter though. Rocky and I still have business to do. Sitting at the dining room table typing and reviewing numbers with Rocky... I can't believe we lost $760,000 in Dofferty last year. We have to talk to Mickey about bankruptcy, Rocky. Rocky? Rocky's in deep stare daydreaming. C stares at him, trying to determine if he's okay. Earth to Rocky. Rocky snaps out of it. Yep. You remember when we were kids and we used to go to Fordham Comics and Tony would always give us a comic book every single time we were there. No reason. He's a nice guy. And in caring remembrance, C smiles. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's nice of you to remember. Yeah, I remember. Then in a random fit of rage. And I also remember when I stuck that pencil in that fucker's hand who said that the drawing that Tony put up or the wall that I did was stupid. Almost immediately calming down. Yeah. I digress. Whatever. Charlie, not knowing whether or not he's having a low blood sugar reaction, proceeds calmly in conversation. You hungry? I think we need to take a break from business for a little bit. Plus, I got a call with Christy in about an hour to see how we're holding up out west. Now, before you go judging my brother, you have to know one thing. He's had juvenile diabetes since he was nine. And this COVID shit is making it really hard for me to determine what's a low blood sugar reaction and what's just... His normal behavior. Now, my brother may control it, but deep down inside, he's a killer. We fast forward a bit to find Mumbles Charlie's boy playing his PlayStation console in his room. There's only one thing I truly give a damn about in this life, and that's my family. My son Mumbles is here with us while my wife and daughters remain isolated in our New York home. Rocky and I have done everything in our power to keep my son isolated in his room. I swear to God, I don't know what I would do if... I got my son sick. Even with Rocky and I infected, we maintain a solid routine of sanitation and disinfect everything we touch. I leave food for Mumbles outside his door, and luckily, he's had a bathroom attached to his bedroom so he can shower and go whenever he needs. And lucky for me, teenagers really don't complain when they're stuck isolated in their bedrooms playing video games, stuffed in the face with mac and cheese. Even still, it's killing me that I can't see my own child in my own apartment. C knocks on Mumbles' room and his bedroom door. Hey, Mumbles? Yes, sir. Your food's out here. Okay. You okay in there? You need anything? Mumbles says, yeah, I'm fine. But I got a question. When are we going back home? This question pains C. Soon, buddy. I can't stand lying to my children. But even if it means their peace of mind, then so be it. The Tale of Two Skulls. A few years back, Rocky and I took a trip to Durango, Mexico. Rival tribes were interfering with our business, and we had to show face to make a point. There we met a shaman named Maracame. Now, Maracame was a bad motherfucker. No one messed with him. When our business was done, Maracame asked Rocky and I to visit him in his hut. He had two identical skull rings that received ceremonial blessing. Now, the story has it that they were forged by their ancestors for two warrior brothers, Nahua and Sure. Ever since, we don't go anywhere without them. 
We're going to fast forward to the scene where Christy calls and C answers the phone. And whenever you're ready. Charlie, we had a problem, but I fixed it. Tell me. Market Tech backed out of their $40 million contract for surgical masks. That doesn't sound like fixing to me. I called Robert Dunn, their CEO. And? I called Robert Dunn. So it was fixed? My people found London funds tied to him with our current administration. He was holding off all major deals before cashing out stocks before retirement. I threatened to go public. I'm surprised you let him live. C scratches his beard, listening attentively. What about the Louis Market and Metric Solutions merger? That hasn't happened yet. Jesus Christ, Christy, it's been two years since they've been in talks. I need this deal fucking done. What doesn't our $6 million investment behind Metrics do for them? I said yet. Give me until 5 p.m. tomorrow. I owe Louis a 24 hour breather. Yeah, I don't want to know why. But good. What else do you have for me? Well, your anniversary with the missus is in three days, and I've scheduled your face chat for 6 p.m. Your daughter's birthday is on Friday, where I've also scheduled your face chat time for 11 a.m. Mickey is talking to Ferdinand in Tampa in one hour to lock in the numbers with Chidart Industries. In a mid global climate, Rocky's profits have increased by 3% this quarter, and yours by two. So I've ordered a Highland Park 30 or single malt scotch whiskey since you lost them that bad. Fuck. Rocky looks at Christy. Hey, Christy, how you doing? C delivers an annoyed look. And that's Christy's line. No, it says Rocky said, you say Rocky says hi, and then I go, I, I heard. Know. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> Business is ahead of schedule, which means I'm going to bed by 9. By this evening, a 10% raise will be deposited in my bank. Yep. Rocky says hi. You say I heard. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was confusion with the with the lineup, but that's okay. And then Ruben goes. Oh, he puts his phone down. And let me talk to Christy for a sec. C looking confused, hands him his phone. C looking at Christy. Hold on a minute. I miss you. Hey, Christy, how you doing, baby? <laughs> hey, listen, I need to ask you something. I wanted to ask you for a long time. You've got to be honest with me. No bullshit. What you wearing under that shirt? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Rosie is C's mother of his children. She's a Puerto Rican and Italian born in Seattle. He calls her in the New York home to see how they're doing over there. Rosie answers, hey, hold on a minute. Quieting the kids. Shh, mama's on the phone. I'm so sorry. Don't apologize. How are things? She says, crazy. There are, there's some things you need to know. You too, listen. You know the government shut us down here again. We can't leave the loft until we get... The okay from the administration. See, she looks around. The feds came by again yesterday. They came by with the warrant and they were looking for the drugs and the money. Who was it? Who else, Charlie? It was Dominic. So then what's the problem? He's getting his payment. We're fine. No, listen, he told me the things are getting really bad with this virus. Charlie's hand is beginning to shake uncontrollably. He's acting strong, hiding his pain from his wife. Charlie, I'm freaking the fuck out. People are dying quicker than the first time, Rosie. Nothing's working. Listen, he had a meeting with the administration, the virologist and the biologist. Yeah, I meant to tell you, Dr. Jacobs came by last night. I have stage three of the infection. It's mutating again. People are dying quicker than the first time. Taking a moment of shock and holding in an, an angry expression, Charlie, what do you need? What do I need to do? Nothing, babe. I was just ordered to maintain this fever and do my norm. I need to be resting. This stage is no cakewalk, but you know there's nothing I can't handle. I know. Hold on. The girls want to say hey. C's face immediately transforms from killer to teddy bear. Papa! Papa! My babies, oh my goodness, you've gotten so big. Hurry home, Papa, we love you. Papa's going to see you really soon, okay? I promise. I love you too, my angels. Let Papa talk to Mama again, okay? Rosie takes the phone back. Crazy kids. Speaking of, how's Dee doing? You mean Mumbles? He's good. He's in his room playing his games. No. No, Charlie. You're not going to give him a nickname. We do not want him knowing about the business. He's not going to follow in our steps, I promise. 
I've already made the appropriate deals to set the kids up right. It's just going to take some time to take out the trash. You've kept this secret for almost 20 years, Rosie. You always worry like it's the first one. And I will always worry until the day comes when you and Rocky don't have to do any this gardening anymore. Obviously, there were some changes. Why gardening? Yeah, I know. Okay, listen, I have to run. I have a call with Mickey in a few. Tell him we said hello and see, take care of yourself. We love you. Love yous too. C hangs up the phone and continues to look at his phone in pain. We now move to Death Cometh. Charlie remembers the words of his mentor. Now someone once told me that during the final moments of your life, one becomes prolifically poetic in thought, as if every word in the human language funnels itself inside your subconscious. It's as if the universe itself decides to show you the meaning of life, and you in turn write a novel masterpiece. Now I'm not sure I'm quite there yet, but I'll tell you what, perspective forged by self-awareness has been the driving force behind every decision and action I've taken this week, and it feels like the perfect defining closing to my masterpiece novel. Mickey, David McKenzie, call C ahead of schedule through face chat. Mr. C, sir, I'm a few minutes early. Oh, wow, with all due respect, Mr. C, you look like crap warmed over. Mickey, where the fuck, why the fuck are we taking such massive hits in our accounts? I know I'm sick as a fucking dog, but I can read numbers. Don't worry about it, Mr. C. I've got everything under control. I swear to God, Mickey, if you don't ease my anxiety this instant, I'm going to have a fucking heart attack. Mr. C, breathe. Listen to Papa Mickey. Remember 2008 when the housing market crashed and I discovered the destructive anomaly before Riker 8 got hit? Charlie immediately. Wanted, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope. Charlie immediately sees Mickey's point and knows where he's going, but allows him to explain anyway. We would have tanked, Mr. C. The same thing is happening here. We're taking massive hits to the economy's impact as a whole, but everything is balancing out. I predicted this a year ago and already implemented the fail safes. I just sent you the details via email for you to review. Trust the numbers. Mickey, maintaining the most reassuring voice and temperament, calms C down. C closes his eyes and takes the deepest breath. Mickey, I don't know how you fucking do it. <sighs> Tell me, how did talks with Ferdinand and Tampa go? Did you lock in the numbers with Tridart Industries? In a curious and calm you, tone. You know, Mr. C, Ferdinand said no at first. So I told him the story about the defenestrations of Prague in 1618. Tell me you didn't throw him out the fucking window. C places his hand over his face, worried that the deal went south. But calmly and reassuringly speaking... Oh no, Mr. C. I just hung him over the roof of the building until he agreed. He bled out a lot due to the crowbar I took to his legs, but the blood seemed to run, rush back while he was dangling nicely. And no worries, he's locked in through contracts and all. I made sure I had the names of his wife and kids before meeting with him while taking his seat back and breathing out heavily. You're an angel, Mickey. We needed that fucking deal locked in. It's my pleasure, Mr. C. Hey, do you mind if I ask my boss a favor? Anything, Mick. Go to sleep. You really do look like crap. Sweating profusely, C struggles to get to the bathroom. Once there, he begins looking at his face, noticing breakouts and trying to determine what exactly is happening to him internally. He coughs and stares at his hands and sees blood. Fuck. He whispers to himself, knowing that he is most likely going to die. And we move to episode two. Rocky lights his candle wicks. We find C back where we left him, in the bathroom. A thunderous cough rattles and blood is seen dripping onto the porcelain top of his bathroom sink. That's my line. Hold on. His vision fades in and out and as he gazes into his hands, noticing blood. He speaks his brother's name softly and collapses. Rocky. A ceiling fan is turned on. Rocky, who's found C lying on the bathroom floor, has laid C on his bed. He takes his temperature and notices he's really, it is really high. He goes to the closet and grabs a rag. He then proceeds to go to the freezer and gather ice into a plastic bowl to place in the rag and put on C's head in an attempt to calm his fever. Rocky, listening to classical guitar records and reading a book, is in deep thought about his brother in the other room and of the past. 
He later grabs a beer from the fridge and a cold glass and sits on the dining room table. And Rocky narrates. <clears throat> if you would have told me 20 years ago that C and I would be where we are today, I would have called you batshit crazy. I remember he was nine and I was 18, running our Theo Manny's bodega on the East End. This was the years before we sold it to Yura. We stayed with him over the summer months to give Ma a break. I miss those days. Our mother wanted us to work and be productive in order to keep us off the streets. At that time, Theo had the most successful bodega in all of New York. I'm serious. He had people of all kinds coming to, into his joint to grab coffee, newspapers, and whatever else they had an excuse to go in there for. Real reason everyone loved his bodega, though, was that Pan Cubano. He had partnerships with Cuba Bakery on East 138th Street. They fucking flocked in there to grab un cantito de ese cubanito y café. Everyone loved our Tio Manny. He had the biggest addiction to people and, well, the biggest addiction to gambling. Manny was always trying to hit the numbers. He spent a fortune on lottery tickets, bet on horse races, sports games, cockfights, and would make the dumbest, most random bets for a fucking dollar I'd ever seen. Every day he'd have us run the shop while he was out back with the boys. Mondays were Caribbean stud, Tuesdays were three card poker, Wednesdays were craps, he loved craps, and Thursdays he played seekball with the Chinese next door at Eeps. You'd think that with as much as he loved to fucking gamble, he'd be good at it. <laughs> Eventually, shit got so bad, Theo owed one too many people. Manny was an equal opportunity opportunist. He borrowed from los italianos, los cubanos, y los dominicanos, hasta los chinos. These were the bad times. See, in the early 90s, the diminishing power of the five families opened up doors for other criminal organizations to come up into the scene. The Ong Long Tong ruled Chinatown, running their bed and parlors where they'd schemed people out of millions for years. Tio Manny was one of these poor bastards. Eventually, when there's no one you can go to and everyone refuses to give you money, you go to the one place in New York you never want to step foot in, La Familia Martinez's territory. Cartel is always messy. They get too careless. They don't understand the power behind veiled legitimacy. Now, don't get me wrong. The Martinez family weren't like the Latin Eagles in Lakeview or any of the other 100 street gangs. Nah. The reason why many don't fuck with the Martinez cartel is simple. The allies span anywhere and everywhere from the Italian mafia, the Nietas, the Latin Kings, Russian mafia, and the Guadalajara cartel. Now this is a part that's extremely important to know and remember. When you have an enemy with such powerful allies, it's imperative that you befriend the rivals. But one day, the old man's bodega got robbed. He sent C and I to go get lunch down at Magiani's to pick up two of their favorite calisones. If you know, then you know. Anyway, when we got back, Dio was lying on the ground in front of his bodega, swimming in his own blood. They shot him 22 times and stabbed him 50, and in broad daylight. Whoever had done it, obviously, didn't give a fuck about who saw or who was around at all. Dio Manny was Ma's only brother, a baby brother. So when she found out what happened, she snapped. It was unbearable to watch just how much she crumbled. They ended up admitting her to Bellevue for a few years until she had rehabilitated. We shut the bodega down for a few weeks. And when word got around that Theo Manny was killed, everyone from all five boroughs came to pay their respects. There must have been at least thousands of candles people had laid in front of the store. Theo Manny had willed his bodega and all of his life insurance to C and I. Not to mention his entire collection of menudo CDs and vintage Playboy magazines. Eh. While Ma was away, I took care of C. The bodega was now ours, and we had enough money to do something worth a damn with it. it. Wasn't long before C and I knew 
we wanted bigger and better things. 1990, we used Manny's life insurance as well as the accumulated wealth of our store to open up a chain of bodegas across the state. Eventually, when the time was right, we sold Tio Manny's bodega for $4.5 million to Yura Magos, a Greek widow with a fortune. The other nine were sold for no less than two mil. After another five years, we bought a couple of abandoned historic buildings and turned them into luxury apartments to help rebuild areas of the Bronx. Investing has always been in our blood. After we filed our Articles of Incorporation in 1999, hired our board of directors, and had our licensing approved in 2000, RCR Corporation was born. There's one problem that goes overlooked when growing your wealth the way we have. The corrupt individuals that you are forced to work with grow exponentially. After you find yourself in something illegitimate, you find ways to clean up the mess. Now, since day one, both C and I wanted more than anything is to make a difference in people's lives and when you deal with corrupt corporations led by maniacal CEOs or some fucking psychotic asshole with daddy's hand-me-down millions, you find that you can't just tell them to leave you alone. And that's when the bang came out. <laughs> Bam! Sometimes you have to pull the trigger. Yep, Rocky's cell phone, it's Hunter Maxo, his runner, Hunter, <clears throat> a 19-year-old dropout from Ohio, trying to earn his way into the ranks of the Reyes Enterprise. He's called a runner because whatever job Rocky has him doing requires running in the end. Now, you'll see. Hunter now lives with his dad in New York. His father's New York PD and hates that his brothers have a grip on his son. Hunter, you're up. Oh, he must have he must have dropped. I'll take over. Mr. Reyes, we've got a big problem. Nah, 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 nah. nah. Who the fuck starts a conversation when we got a problem, huh? The correct introduction to this conversation would be, Mr. Reyes, we've got a problem, but I fix it, or I'm getting it fixed. You understand? Yes, sir, Mr. Reyes. I... Uh... <sighs> Reyes, man. Mm -mm. Look, Hunter, let me explain something to you. When you manage an organization like ours... You require immediate answers and resolution to whatever issues come our way. So when someone like you calls me and has that stupid look on their fucking face and tells me we have problems with no solutions, I get a little fucking upset. So let's identify the predicament and nip it in the bud, shall we? Almost immediately interrupting Rocky's last words, my dad found out I'm running for you. Rocky's face transparently transforms to an uneasy understanding of this dilemma. Hunter's dad, Troy, is a Boy Scout cop. He despises the Reyes and was completely infuriated when he found money in his son's bag. How'd this happen? He, uh, he was looking in my bag and, uh, well, he found the money I was supposed to pay Captain Murphy. What'd you tell him the money was for? I, uh, I told him it was to pay off Captain Murphy. <laughs> Hunter. Oh, Hunter, I'm going to ask you just one time. Is your father going to be an issue? I don't know, Mr. Reyes. He was, he was pissed the hell off. I don't take beatings on the regular, and he got me pretty good. I thought he was going to kill me. I don't think I can be able to run for you anymore. Oh, Hunter, Hunter, you're going to fuck everything up. I have jobs lined up for you, and just for you, for the next six months. There can't be anyone else. Yeah, come on, let me talk to your father. Don't say another word to him about anything, you got it? Mr. Rocky, sir. <laughs> Reyes, man, Reyes. Ah. I know you and C are men of your power, but my dad is fucking scary. No offense, son. But your dad is a cop, like any other cop. Now, I respect the man for raising a good son. You are. You're a good kid. I do. But I know things about his precinct that he does not know that I know. And he doesn't want me to know. Now, if your father's going to be a problem, 
I'm going to need to be the solution. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Handle it. Rocky hangs up the phone. Meanwhile, C is awake, staring at the ceiling, looking as miserable as he feels. Rocky walks into his room to check on him. Rocky opens C's bedroom door, laying down with his eyes open. And really, I changed that to yeah. not bed yet? <laughs> that was, that's when I just said, yeah, I was going to say, hey, brother, I just said, uh, are you dead yet? I say, yeah, still looking at the ceiling, lying down. Come back, Lase, his forehead to check to see if it's... Oh, at that moment I said, man, this kid Hunter is beginning to be a real pain in my ass, man. I told you he was too young to get involved. Kids these days are nothing like they were at, at that age. C knows that Hunter is trying to run up the ranks with the Reyeses. You told me? Get the fuck out of here. I told you he wasn't going to work because his dad's a fucking scout pig, man. When nobody told you to, Charlie's phone rings abnormally louder than usual, and both brothers instantly go silent. It's Joey D. See, we have a problem. Lori Bianco is not in New York. Her husband, though. Her husband, though, was. Her husband was, though. Excuse me. What do you mean, was? Well, he's still here. But just, you know, implying he's been murdered by Joey himself. <laughs> Rocky was supposed to say... Now tell me you buried that motherfucker. Yo, is that Rocky? As he smiles in excitement. Charlie, Joey D. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I say, yo. yo, what it do, man? What up, brother? How you been? <laughs> Rocky goes on and on about the video. But Joey, game. Joey, I'd say, yo, Rocky, you play my Fioso 4 yet? Oh, yeah. Yo, Rocky, you play my, my Fioso 4 yet? Joey D's immense ADHD kicks in. It came out last night. And I go on and on and say, yo, brother, man, that motherfucker is the best, man. They got things spanning historically in the mafia. I mean, in this thing of ours, you know, from the 30s, 40s, they got the cars driving up and down the old streets, all that loveliest architecture of New York, old world, and... Ah. Uh, this guy wants to talk to you. The fuck's the matter with you? Both of you. Sorry, C. Joey regains his focus. What do you want me to do about Gloria? Bounce. We'll figure it out later. If we don't have eyes on her, then that means she has eyes on us. Until then, get the hell out of New York ASAP. Joey, that means as soon as possible. Okay? Rocky gets another call coming in from Hunter again. Rocky shows his phone to see. Joey, we got another call coming in. Get out of there immediately. I don't care what you got to do. we Will do, see. As he accepts the other incoming call, he answers. It's Hunter's father, Troy Maxwell, and I meant to say Rocky. Ronaldo! Troy is upset, but he's a pro at keeping his cool. Hey, Mr. Maxwell. How you doing? Shut your mouth and listen to me. You need to leave my son alone. I don't know what all kinds of trash you have him doing for you, but it ends today. It op it's ob- Oh, yeah, it's you. Oh, well, it's obvious to me that you're upset about something. Upset? I'm infuriated. $150,000 my son has. And for what? For bribery? Uh, Mr. Maxwell, I don't know what it is exactly that has you all riled up. I mean, is it that your son is working for me? Or is it that he's making more money than what your captain is paying you for it? Come on. Listen here. I know who you and your brother are, all right? I'm not stupid. But this, this right here, this is too much. You know as well as I do that as a father, I cannot allow this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold the fuck up. You can't allow? You can't allow? You call me? Talk to me like you run things around here? You fuck. You sick pig fuck, you. Who are you talking to? Remember who the fuck you're talking to. Need I remind you that your captain is under my payroll. And whether it's your son, your foxy ass mother... Or that sexy, delicious, cute little fucking wife of yours filling his pockets. The only thing that's keeping you from losing both your job and your life is Hunter. You want to be a wise guy, tough guy? On the face chat, are we? He's my son. You stay away from him. You hear me? Mess with another man's family. You want problems? You've got him. Troy hangs up. Rocky is shocked, surprised, impressed even. <gasps> Yeah, I like the guy. Hmm. What am I going to do? He's got bigger balls than I thought. 
immediately changing the subject calmly and looking at Rocky with pouty eyes. I, I remember these days. I'm hungry. Can you cook for me? Rocky and C have been inseparable since childhood. They still act like children when alone in true brotherly fashion. Rocky helps his brother stand up. Oh, of course, baby brother. My boy. What's up, Tony? Rocky is cooking as C is taking a shot of whiskey at the table. Today's a big day. C and I have to call our global partners. We're talking massive hits and are working around trade wars in Africa and Japan and the whole, the whole lot of them. Rocky puts food on the table in front of C. Rocky looks at his brother with admiration. You're a tough kid, C. You're going to be all right. I love you. You know that? I'm fucking crazy about my baby brother. My own Looney Tony soon. Stop. I love you too, big brother. Thank you for dinner. C wastes no time eating. Miss you. Cool. We'll eat up. We have a ton of work to do. What day is it? It's Monday. Teleconference day. How much you want to bet my numbers will Riker or alone will beat your four companies this quarter? <clears throat> And get the fuck out of here. The Metro just upgraded into a three-story boutique in the middle of Manhattan, man. First month sales alone broke eight mil. You want to get some? Go, you seen it yet, man? So the answer to your question, I'll gladly bet you one of those million, man. Ain't no way Metro broke numbers like that. I'll take that bet. Hey, easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. Don't end up like Theo Manny. God rest his soul. Que Dios lo cuide y lo protege. C calls Musazi Mayanda, his international relations director of news site Aya Uganda. Musa Jevaliko, tell me the news. Musa, C, my brother, business is good. Our two medical facilities in Mbasa and Mbale have opened up with no problems. Reyes Industries is stronger than ever. That's great. How is the situation with COVID over there? Musa says, many people are, are dying still. The doctors say COVID is mutating. It is. Is our hospital still on schedule for the deadline opening? Oh, yes, C. We can't thank you enough for the work that you and Mr. Rocky are doing for us here. No, Musa, everything is going according to plan thanks to your efforts. It's us who should be thanking you. How is the war with your... How is the war you are fighting with the other families? It's slow, but we're winning. Musa, send me the details via email on our quarterly profit. I have a solid 12 I have to attend. It's already in your inbox, Mr. C. Whatever. Owen C., the Prime Minister says thank you for his birthday gift. Whatever, Musa. Meanwhile, Charlie walks into the living room and listens to Rocky speak in a wheezy. The eagle for the Reyes family is a close and trusted lifelong friend. Wheezy's job is to have his eyes and ears on everyone and everything and knows exactly when things are going to happen before they do. Wheezy is purposely giving false information to the feds, the CIA, and other agencies to distract them from what the Reyeses are doing. Wheezy is in the house looking out the window blinds and notices a car parked outside. That's you. Oh, Wheezy, listen to me. There isn't time to waste. We're about to take down two of the most corrupt companies in the business. And you're telling me there's a third? That's you. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right, because he went on. All right. Now, I need you to make sure that what you're telling me is 100% accurate. Cool? You remember what you told me, Rocky? Every dirty company that RCR has invested in needs to go, right? So, Kuzmic Enterprises needs to fucking go, dude. Mikhail is a maniac, man. 15 counts of rape, extortion, murder, sex trafficking. The dude is a real piece of shit. It took me a while to get all the dirt, but when I found it, shit was inches thick. I can make the call to have him taken out, but it's going to be tricky. You know that limp dick Drago looking motherfucker has a small army. And we have a militia is what you say. Yeah, he's got an army. We got a militia. All whatever. Right. Do whatever you have to. Cool. I already called Mickey. We're going to make sure we hit him so hard that he or whatever offspring he has won't be able to recover for another hundred years. Also, death over prison on this one, okay? Who do you want me to call? Call damage. The poor guy's been hungry for work lately after his time spent in Slovakia, man. Anyone else? Damage is, damage is the one, man. He doesn't play nice with others. Doesn't have to. Call him. Sounds good, Cholo. Adios, pendejo. Rocky immediately calls Mickey. Mickey answers and is found with a mohawk. That's you. 
right here. <laughs> Mickey, do I even want to know? You like it, huh? I got bored with the old look. What do you think about the blue? Makes me look younger, doesn't it? I thought this style would go good with the Harley I just bought. <laughs> Mickey, <laughs> you know it's normal for a man to go through a midlife crisis around, well, around days that you at, right? What? Oh no, Mr. Rocky. I just decided it was time for me to feel like myself again. Mickey, Mickey. When was the last time you took your meds, man? Let's see. Um, three weeks ago? Three <laughs> Mate, do me a favor. Get back on them, okay? Papa Mickey's on top of things, Mr. Rocky. Don't even sweat. Anyway, what's up, boss? How can I help my brother today? Mikhail Kuzmich. Yes, I just got done talking to Wheezy about him this morning. You ready for this? So, we have Manalo Otto, head of the Medellin Cartel's Arcadia Corporation, and Mikhail Kuzmich of Kuzmich Enterprises as two of the three we have to get rid of, correct? Well, I got a little crafty and corrupt, corrupted Kuzmich Enterprises server about an hour ago. I set up an unauthorized scheduled transfer of $820 million of the Medellin Cartel's funds linked to Arcadia to go through Kuzmich Enterprises' direct account. When Manala traces the transaction, it's going to point to Mikhail's people responsible for the hack. And that will automatically violate EFT, which are the electronic funds transfer under Regulation E. Shit, Mickey, that's genius. But there aren't heavy penalties for reg e violate for reg e violations well here's the thing my first cousin was one of the congressmen that helped write udap let's just say he'll make sure the fees that both parties will have to pay will be 100 times that of their worth they're going to shut they're going to be shut down by the federal government so hard they'll be facing years of prison time if convicted and if they beat the sentencing which they won't because they're violating federal guidelines, the publicity alone is going to ruin their business credibility. Ha ha ha. Can you picture the headline of the cover of Forbes on this one? Complete humiliation. That's fantastic, Mick. Love that shit. See, you hearing this? I'm Paul Christie. I'm on it. I miss your laugh, Mickey. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to say. <laughs> okay, Mick. I gotta make a few phone calls. Stay on top of this. I want you to oversee this entire operation. Entiendes? Yes, sir, Mr. Rocky. Hey, and boss, make sure you and Mr. C rest. Let Papa Mickey take care of things. Nah, we'll sleep when we're dead, Mick. Christy answers the phone immediately. Hey, boss. Weezy just called a few minutes ago to fill me in. You need me to pay a visit to Kuzmich? Even better. When's the last time you had a Guanabana? Ah, Colombia it is then. I do need to work on my tan. Set up a meeting with Manolo. We need him loosened up. Will do. Also, Damage will want you to call him. He's still not talking to Weezy. You still mad about that thing? Wouldn't you be? Oh, before I forget, I just sent you Gloria Bianco's new number and location we traced through the SX-101. We found her in Costa Rica. Perfect. We need to handle her as soon as possible. All right. Joey D. Gloria Bianco answers his phone. Gloria. Oh, I think you're on mute, my dear. <laughs> the beautiful technology. There you go. I'm going to go back to flip phone shit. <laughs> Wait. I'm sorry. Are you looking for your gardener? Gloria Bianco says in the direct... In Gloria Bianco, what the hell are you doing there? And where's Joey D? I'm sorry. Are you looking for your gardener? Yep. And then it's the next one for you. Where Before you continue... Sorry. You're good. Before you continue to insult my intelligence, you need to ask yourself a series of important questions. Questions like, does a woman who comes home to a slain husband 
deliver the wrath of the gods to her enemies? Or does the person who took her husband's life suffer the same fate? Gloria looks up to the sky and pauses, holding in her tears. Her face then grows cold as she looks at Charlie. And that's yours again. It's no secret we've hated each other for years. But I never thought it'd end up like this. I have never been each Gloria wipes her eyes. Don't act innocent, Gloria. Your husband, you and your husband are murderous pigs. We have no reason to continue business. Where's Joey D? You know, I see why you like him so much. Joey's, Joey was a tough kid. Unfortunately, his head's gonna be hung on my, on my wall as a trophy. As tough as he was, he wasn't too bright. My security found his wallet in my den. Hey, but that's okay. You want to say goodbye to him? Charlie does everything to keep his composure. Gloria shows Charlie Joey's head. Ten times ten. And that one's you again. They'll go perfect with that other, the other ones I have, don't you think? She turns her camera back to her. You want a war, Charlie Reyes? Instead of this me crossing the battlefield. Gloria hangs up. Charlie, holding in his tears, cannot believe what he had just witnessed. Rocky draws out his blade as he stares into space in quickly climbing anger. Rocky, we're going to war. In absolute and purest rage, Rocky stabs his knife onto the table. You want to do the scream? Yeah. Hopefully it'll wake up my son so we can do shit today. <laughs> ah! Ching Act three. I mean, ah! <laughs> war. It's been three weeks since we lost Joey D, and nothing's been the same. Rocky and I have been able to remain focused on our mission. In samurai lore, Yamamoto Sumitomo said it this way, It's good to face challenges in your youth. He who has never suffered will not sufficiently temper his character. Rocky and I, we live by this every day. There's been a ton of footwork happening the last few weeks. We've got Hunter running for Rocky. Christy's cleaning house out west, and if there's one person who took Joey's death just as hard as we did, it was Mickey. Mickey has single-handedly hunted down Gloria Bianco and Mikhail Kuzmich's underbosses since he caught wind of Joey's death. The scene transitions to Charlie, Rocky, and Mickey at Joey D's funeral. That's you, bro. Evan just got a little cooler, boy. Rocky places two Nintendo games on Joey's grave. Yup. Before we decided to strike back and end this war, we agreed to one simple fact when delivering vengeance and justice. Take no mercy. Mickey spent six days on the hunt, utilizing all of his connections and all of his people. <coughs> if you came close to him, he'd stab you. If he ran out of bullets in his rifle, he'd reach for his pistol. And God forbid you were in his way. Mickey's like a brother. He's more family than family, most days. And in this business, you have to be able to handle things without question. And in our family, you never ask because you already know the intent behind our next steps. Losing Joey was a reminder of what kind of world we live in and what responsibilities lie within the palms of our hand. Wheezy asked me the other day, why the fuck do you, all, you and Rocky always do what you, all, what you do with all the money that you have? And my answer was simple. When you become a billionaire, you either become Batman or Lex Luthor. Hunter plants his final explosives for the day in Mikhail's train yard. Hunter calls Rocky's phone. Mr. Reyes, it's done. A news anchor from Atlanta's news station comes on. Good evening, everybody. Atlanta Metro Police have launched an investigation on a series of crimes. Crimes that our police chief says are associated with gang violence. The scene cuts to Troy walking, and Troy narrates. I don't know what's going on in the city. Someone's taken out these mob bosses, and I've been instructed to find these clowns and put an end to it. I know Hunter's playing a part in it, but I don't know how deep he's in. I can't imagine he would do anything like this. I've been trying to figure out a way to ask him, or at least sit, sit him down to talk. Hunter is walking down the street to get ready to plant a bomb for the next assignment. Unbeknownst to him, his father is right around the corner in the coffee shop, regrouping before embarking in, on his solo mission. And Hunter narrates. You ever wonder how people are able to take a life and go to sleep like nothing's ever happened? I haven't slept in days. I keep hearing the sound of the explosions I've caused that wake me straight out of my nightmares. I get why we're doing this. I just 
Wish Dad understood why the hell we are. Anyway, shut up, Hunter. This is your biggest gig and you can't mess it up. You're going to go in as planned, set the charges, and run. The only thing that can stop you is your dad. Troy sees Hunter and bangs out the glass to get his attention. Hunter freezes in fear. And that's my fucking father. Hunter smiles nervously and walks into the coffee shop. Alright dude, chill out. Your dad doesn't know shit. There's no way. He can't suspect anything. I know he doesn't, cause... Well damn, I'm still alive. Shit, I do smell like the explosion. Do I smell like this, the explosion from this morning? Just be cool, dude. Be cool. Hunter sits in front of his dad. So what have you been up to, man? Just walking around town or what? Yeah, you know, the usual. Staying busy. Hunter wipes his hands with a hand towel under the table to clean the explosive residue. I was about to go to Johnny's. Well, you know, I just worry about you, all right? You need to stay safe out there. There's a lot of crazy things going out there, and I think I got a lead. Taking a short, deep breath. Yeah, no, I'm safe. I promise. Trying to change the subject. So, what are you working on? New case? <coughs> Rocky is home, sharpening his blades while talking with Hunter on his... Well, it's supposed to be cell phone, but it's in person. How do you know your dad knows if you're running, Hunter? You have to see him, Mr. Reyes. I know he knows. He was transparent. I could see his worry. I could see his... His anger. Well, why do you think he didn't say something about it before? I don't know. I think he doesn't want me to know the truth. He's worried. Listen, Papa. If he really knew, you'd know. Did you at least finish the job? I couldn't. Saying goodbye to him outside the coffee shop was strange. I know he had me followed for a while. I don't know what to do. Look, you're doing an amazing job. Now, we need Mikhail's North End headquarters taken out. Be smart, though. Stay low. Keep tracks on your dad as often as possible, okay? In Long Island, Boston-born Amelia Franchese pulls into her office on the phone. Uh -oh. She's walking in and locking her door <clears throat> and getting ready to call her boyfriend, Rocky Reyes. She goes into her office <clears throat> and calls. Meanwhile, back in Georgia, Rocky sees Amelia calling. Uh fuck. This is why I was, you know, with yeah, the phone, yeah. I was like, God, I gotta answer this. Mila, baby, how you doing? Kellen, you're up. Did she freeze? I think she's frozen. Oh. Kellen, are you alive? Did COVID get you? Okay. I'll, I'll do my best, Amelia Franchese. Rocky, you better tell me you broke your fingers, wise guy. It's been seven months and no call, not a text, not even an email. What am I, street garbage? I've been calling you. I thought you changed your number when you didn't answer something. Come on. You haven't called Rocky. You haven't called one bit. I'm over here telling these hungry-ass boys uh. to go jump in traffic thinking, you know, that I'm going steady with the big shot in New York. You remember what you told me, Rocky? You told me we were going steady. Do you know the definition yeah. of that word? Hey, we are. Can you hear me now? Hey! You're frozen. Uh, your pictures. Oh, I think you're coming up. I think she's coming back up. I was doing the best Amelia Tell Franchise. Tell I'm not here. here. Tell I fell asleep or something. Tell I'll be back the day after never. You're, you're back on. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Are you ready for your scene? Hey, girl. How you been? I can't see you, Kellen. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, though. <clears throat> You're back on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? I can, I can hear you now. Testing, testing. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can yes. hear you. Yes, ma'am. Are you ready for your scene? Yeah, I don't know what the heck my computer's doing, but we give it a swirl. Okay, okay. Uh, let's, all right, let's start from uh, in Long Island. <laughs> Rocky goes, Amelia, baby, how you doing? Rocky, you gotta tell me you broke your fingers, wise guy. It's been seven <laughs> months, and no call, not a text, not even an email? What am I, street garbage? I have been calling you. I've been calling you, man. I thought you changed your number when you didn't answer or something. I don't know. All 
Uh oh, did she drop? She dropped. Oh, boo. Her computer kicked her out. This is the beauty of live, guys. You haven't called, Rocky. <laughs> you haven't called one bit. I'm over here telling these hungry ass boys to jump in the fucking traffic thinking, you know, that I'm going steady with a big shot in New York. You remember what you told me, Rocky? You told me we were going steady. Do you know the definition of that word? Babe, we are, we are. Nothing's changed. What'd I tell you, huh? I told you I manage some of the largest corporations in the world and I... I don't want to hear it, Rocky. You men are all the same. I've been a good woman to you. And you leave me here looking like a fool? Waiting on your phone calls, worried to death about not knowing if you're okay or not? And don't get me started with... I interrupt. Joey died. Mila's mouth stays open in shock. It's Amelia. Oh my God, baby. I am so sorry. What? What? How? Why didn't you call me? A few weeks ago. Good. I'll tell you about it when I get back to New York. Charlie and I are okay. We just have some important business to take care of first, okay? As soon as it's done, I'll come over and see you, okay? We'll go to your favorite spot, get away for a little bit. Tell her, hold on, mama. You need me to do anything while I'm here? Just hold tight for me, Chula. Hang in there, Rocky, okay? I will. Mwah! So, listen. I think the big man upstairs has a funny way of doing things. I made some calls like you wanted me to. And I found your daughter. Give me a moment, because I really do have to sit in silence, guys. Rocky? Yeah. I'm just... She's in Florida, married, two kids. You sure? I mean, how certain are you? It's her, baby. I bet my job on it. Oh, Rocky was a picture of his daughter holding back his emotions. My chinita. Uh, send me the details, mama. Seen Custer Charlie reviewing documents at his laptop at the loft. Oh, it was more than that. Yeah. But it, it went it goes blase. Into the, yeah, I got super no sad. Speech. Yeah, I was looking at it. I was kissing my screen. And I love my little baby girl. Christy calls and I <laughs> answer. Boss, guess you decided to have a sit down with you tomorrow? Manolo. The one and only. I'm sending you a driver to come get you in the morning. We had your G400 flown and parked in Columbus. CSG, not Hartsfield. Wait, what? Why? What the fuck happened to my Gulfstream G650? They still have the news down there. Hartsfield's maintenance hangar exploded yesterday. The Pearl was in Lot 2A. I love that plane. I know. She was pretty. What's the go in Manolo? Am I taking him out after your meeting? I may need Manolo alive. Just for a little while. He's actually pulled out of America since he realized we're taking down his competition. Do you have any issues with him while making arrangements for me? You know, I can appreciate a good-looking Latin man and all, but that fucker gives me the creeps. If he calls me baby one more time, I'm going to fly down there and cut his tongue out of his mouth. I'll make sure you get your chance. President Marquez tells me he's causing too much trouble. The Medellin cartel is always into some weird shit. We're going to have to handle him eventually anyway. That reminds me. I just got off the phone with Marquez before calling you. He wanted me to tell you he's assigning his top members of their special police to you. District 4 of Sawacha. Isn't that like the most dangerous area of Bogota? It is. Altos de Casuca. It's always a fun time. Hey, who's the driver taking me tomorrow? Victor, why? Do me a favor, will you? Make sure he brings what I need. He's the only one that always forgets the weapons. I don't know why you keep him around, to be honest. It's a promise I made to his mother before she died. He doesn't have anyone. Anyone. Anyway. Anything else you need from me? The only thing I can think of about is a time frame of when you want me to take Manolo out. He's not as easy to track as some of the others. I'll let you know as soon as I'm done speaking to him tomorrow. Once I get him to agree on the turf records, do whatever you want with him. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Christy hangs up. In Toronto, 
Adeline Babineau and her sister Bernadette are Rocky's account and contracting managers for the Metro Boutique, New York City. They're going over their yearly, their yearly accounting information with him as he plans to expand to the five boroughs. Charlie lands in Columbia. Hold on. This is going to go back and forth. I land in Columbia. I do my intro. Manolo goes, Charlie Reyes. Que mas? Lima, how's Columbus treating Columbus? Columbia treating you. I just got in. Beautiful countryside as always. You like what I've done with the place? I started investing money into the city. I'm a god here. I figured if any man can appreciate that, it would be you. You've done well for yourself, given your circumstances. You're no better man than me, Carlos. Car Charlie Reyes. We both are men who have struggled. We both have made names for ourselves. We men. We are men who have made billions. Men's. Men's. We haven't Men's. made billions. We've taken billions. The difference between us, however, is that I didn't allow greed to take over. And to be honest, I didn't come here to insult you in your own home. I came to bargain. Cuál la ganga? I need you to stay out of the States after I handle Mikhail and Gloria. You know I can't do that. The U.S. is 80% of my business. I'll put it to you this way. Your president is ready to have you assassinated. You're on our FBI and CIA's most wanted list. Between trafficking drugs, kids, women, and weapons, you've run out of options. And yet I'm still here. Look around you, Charlie. In this world, our government knows we exist. I could shoot you in the face right here and continue to sit and finish my drink without worrying about the police or federal authorities. My <coughs> business helps the government. You run your business your way, and I run mine my way. Do you think you can eliminate all of our business and save the world? You think it won't? Here's the deal. You have two days. Pull out of the U.S., or I won't be able to stop the two, or I won't be able to stop those who want to put your heart on a plate. Charlie, I've known you a long time. I respect you. I see you as a brother. We're connected. And you are right. Greed runs my business. Because of this, I will pull a bullet in your head before I let you dictate the direction in which my business should go. I appreciate the visit, but the next time you decide to waste my time, I'll rip your tongue out of your mouth myself. Charlie star stares at him calmly. Disappointed, he stands up and looks at Manolo. You have two days. Adeline, Mr. Rocky, we know you and Mr. Charlie are busy. However, we wanted to give you the projections for 2023 for the Metro. Rocky says this. I, sh I appreciate you always. <clears throat> Hold on, what was it that had to be real nice and smooth? I appreciate you always. I have a good feeling you both have a good grip on this project. That's why I trusted them to you. And Bernadette is up. Do you Incredible hard, you're on mute. It's the not only do we have a good grip line. Je le sens que vous avez tous les deux un bon matériel. I think you're still on mute. De ces projets, c'est avec quoi je voulais confier. With unmuting. That's okay. I can hear you now, though. There he is. Nope, you're on mute again. <laughs> I said it in French. I should have read it in French. There's more though. Oh, that is what I gotta read, right? Yeah, but yeah, you I can read it now. Que vous apprécie toujours. You're still on me, though. Je le sens. Que vous avez tous les deux un bon matri de ces projets. I can hear you now. Yep. C'est pourquoi je vous les confie. Yep, we're good to go. And now it's your turn. Oh my God, I can't hear you now. Uh-oh. It's, it's your turn with not only do we have a good grip. Oh, I think she dropped out. Not only do we have a good grip, but we're happy to report we're ahead of schedule. How so? How so? The Bronx is now scheduled for ribbon cutting in Q3 of 2021 Manhattan. Q2 2023 just in time for the spring collection. Brooklyn and Queens are both set for Q3 for 2022, and we both got approval for the Marina Cafe in Staten Island for Q4 2023. Oh, there she goes. I can't hear you, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Let's see if she can get back on. We have Abu Bakar. How are you, my brother? 
I'm okay. How are you doing? Doing very well. Say hello to the cast of two bosses. How you been, brother? Everything cool? Everything is cool. Nice to meet you guys. You're still in Turkey, yes? Yeah, right now I'm in Turkey. Fantastic. From all around the That's world. Yeah, yeah. I was just recently coming from Africa. Now I'm in Turkey. How long is it, is your stay going to be in Turkey? Probably it's going to be five years, but I'm so far three years are done right now. That's oh, fantastic. You're man. still doing your school, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm good man. Doing, doing How long before you're done? Come again. How long before you're done with school? How long? I didn't. I didn't understand you well. Oh, he said, uh, how long do you how have long until do you you're have done? before you graduate? Oh, I got two years and a half. Oh, it'll go by quickly. Yeah, yeah. Good two man. Years and a half, I'll do that. I admire that, man. That's cool, bro. Yeah. Nice to meet you, guys. Yeah, it's great to meet you too, man. I'm glad that you can join. We went by your part, but we can go by later and do it again. Thanks, okay, okay. But you are being recorded right now, so this is going to go live. Mm -hmm. So we're going to. Uh, Oh, let me see here. I think Incredible Heart is joining back on. There you are. You are on mute, my dear. See if you can hit the unmute button right quick. Can't hear you. How about now? Now, perfect. Oh, thank God. <laughs> are you ready for your to start your line? Did everybody do this? No, we can start it over. It's very short. Okay. It's, um... Bernadette. Adeline, yep, she tells Rocky about the Metro. Rocky speaks French. And Bernadette says... Not only do we have a good grip, we are happy to report we're ahead of schedule. How so? And then Adeline's line about the Bronx, which I've already read. And then Rocky says... My dears, you are magic. Joe, wants, Joe wanted to manage this account. Never got to see the expansion of it. You've done this family a great service in his honor. Mwah. And then this is yours again. Again? Oh, okay, because I read it in French, in French too. yeah. Michel, vous êtes magique. Joy blase blah. He didn't see it. You guys did outstanding. Run to that. Let's switch gears for a sec. A Gloria Bianco has multiple accounts in Ontario with Bank of Nova Scotia, Bank of Montreal that's funneling money past the thresholds. I need you to work your magic and redirect those deposits to our accounts, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I will need to speak to Mickey to go over some workarounds for the fire <clears throat> Developing new tech that's going to make my life so much easier. Let me know whatever you need, Bernie. And Adi, baby, thank you for everything that you have done with these accounts. I'm truly, truly thankful for you. Thanks. My pleasure, boss. Mwah. Thanks. Mwah, mwah. And then Bernie? Hmm. It's my new Mr. Karaki. Back in Seattle, Manolo finds himself tied to a chair in an undisclosed location. He's blindfolded and, and is gagged. Christy calls Charlie to let him know she has him. Charlie answers his phone. And in a calm tone. Hey, boss. Someone wants to say hi to you. As Manolo is gagged, fuck you, fuck you. It's been three days, and after the shit you just pulled in Colombia, you left me no choice. Charlie lights a cigar. Manolo is trying to get out of his chair. Manny, I remember the things you had to do to survive growing up. It wasn't easy for you. You did what you had to do, and now I have to do what I have to do. Manolo is trying to speak. And Christy takes his gag out and says, what did you say? What, was, what, did, what, what did you say? Yeah. I said, let me go, puta. Look, baby. Oh, yeah. What was that? Christy removes the cloth from his mouth. Calmly, I said, let me go, puta. He pauses, smiles. Look, baby. Christy drops her phone and lands facing up, showing her pulling out a knife and cutting Manolo's tongue out. Manolo is screaming, and the sound of her slicing his throat is heard echoing through the warehouse. Charlie's face remains unbothered. Christy picks up the phone and gets back on, swinging her hair back casually. The tongue is gaining her composure oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Sorry, boss. You don't have much more to say. Hey-oh. The 
her tongue is slithering on the floor as if it's <laughs> pulsating. She picks up the tongue. Anyway. And as the dogs and cats watch with hunger, she throws it at them, tosses them swiftly. They stop. Take a brief moment to eat it. Hunter, mm-hmm. Hunter is showering. Troy walks into his bathroom and grabs Hunter's phone. He removes the case and begins uh, quickly installing a tracking device and, and sets his phone back. He opens his cell phone and checks to sh- make sure his tracking device is working. <laughs> Hunter turns the water off and notices someone is in his bathroom. Dad, is that you? Hey, bud. Yeah, I just wanted to set a fresh towel out. Thanks. We cut to the scene a few hours later out in the woods. Rocky is training Hunter on his knife training. Hunter reveals That's to Rocky that he's ready for his first hit and wants it to be Mikhail. A knife is thrown at a tree by Hunter. And Rocky, he goes, how about that ride along? Nah, man. Absolutely not. No, because then he said something. Well, then I remember oh. the filming. I'm trying to Look, see it. And he goes, no. And then he says, come on, man. I think I've proven no. myself more worthy in nah, the last man, few months. Nah, man, absolutely not. Said. No. Look, kid. Blowing up cars is one thing. Taking out a human that's dead bang right in front of your field of vision, who's ready to shoot you back, is a whole other story, man. Come on. Fuck. Let me go with you. Rocky, I promise you I'm ready. Said no, man, and I mean no. I won't say it again. This job is way too dangerous. Last thing I want is your blood on my hands, but I just can't. You're a good kid, and I like you, Hunter. I can't. Now, did Weezy confirm Mikhail's location? Yeah. Train yard, 5 p.m. Good. What are you and Charlie going to do? We're going to do what we do best. Out by Mikhail's warehouse, he stands by the train yard on the phone with a random henchman by his side, which never happened. And Mikhail Kuzmich is up. <laughs> is everything going as planned? Good. Reyes brothers won't be a problem for long. Hmm. My condolences about your husband. Mr. Bianco and I had a great business partnership. I'll make sure they suffer greatly for what they've taken from us. It's time they lose what we have lost. Cross that road. Cut scene to the battle at the train yard. Rocky and Charlie are walking towards Mikhail's compound. Footsteps, left, right, left, right. And buskers outside. Would we you stop? <laughs> I'm just envisioning it when we're walking through. They, and then the red. Yeah, I know, but I love to see it. I love the movie. A busker is outside tuning his guitar. Charlie walks up to him and throws $200 in his guitar case as a tip. The busker stops tuning his Got guitar and looks at, up at Charlie. <laughs> Got any requests? Charlie says, surprise me. The, pl- the busker plays Asturias. As the busker begins to play, Rocky and Charlie prepare for battle. Mikhail's henchmen are sent out to kill them. Rocky walks towards... Two of them and unveils his knives. He throws a knife at one of them and k- kills him. He throws another at the, uh, he throws another knife at the other henchman and charges him with his knife. Charlie pulls out his rifle from his gun case and begins to fire at others. Mikhail Kuzmich points to Rocky and Charlie and directs his henchmen to attack them. He then begins to run away. As he runs down towards the train yard, Hunter appears with his daggers. Hunter charges at Mikhail with a knife as he stands in place. For every swing, Mikhail dodges. He picks Hunter up and slams him on the tracks. Mikhail is choking Hunter. Mikhail stabs Hunter in his side as Hunter takes his knife and stabs Mikhail in the neck. As Mikhail bleeds out, he rolls over dead. Not quite in that order, but you get the picture. Rocky comes running to Hunter, who is now laying on the ground, shaking him, not knowing if he's alive or not. He pulls... Yeah, also didn't happen. And that's when you say... Kid, wake up. Kid, I told you not to come. Didn't I? Come on, you okay? Well, you gotta be okay. Hugs his head, gives him a quick, you know, nudge, like he was my very own. Hold on tight, kid. Get you out of here. Come on, man. A gunshot rings and Rocky falls to the floor. Troy has shot Rocky. He runs over to Hunter, holding him in his arms, crying. Son, damn it, boy, answer me. Don't do this to me. Troy begins to cry. Come on, baby boy. Don't cash out on me now. Hunter starts to open his eyes and moans in pain. Troy nervously smiles and picks him up. He takes him away and Rocky is left laying on the tracks alongside Mikhail. Dead. One week later, Charlie is sitting at home and calls Gloria Bianco. Is Gloria still here? No. Charlie Reyes. 
Gloria Bianco. Sorry to hear about Rocky. I heard he died valiantly. War's messy, no? War is the shower of blood and bones on both sides. I imagine you're calling to put an end to this crazy war of ours, then. No. No? Come on, Charlie. How much longer do you think we can keep this going? You know, we were fine before you started interfering with our businesses. Do you think killing me is going to miraculously end crime all around the world? <laughs> Silly goose. It's over. And I've won. Charlie pauses. He stares in deep thought and takes a sip of his whiskey. Not really. He was in his car. What made you into what you are? <clears throat> Gloria, confused, responds, Gloria Bianco the businesswoman or Gloria Bianco the cold-blooded monster? Both. Gloria takes a breath and goes into brief thought. I realize that sometimes the ones you take a bullet for are the ones behind the trigger. Years of failed, abusive relationships, toxic family, and the everyday stench of humanity was enough to make me who I am today. I, like you, Charlie, came from nothing. One thing you'll learn about me is that I never lose. I always get what I want, and no one, not even the almighty Charlie Reyes, can stop me from taking over New York. So get the fuck off that high horse you're riding, because when I get back to New York, I'm going to put an end to you and that cookie, that cookie cutter family of yours. How is Rosie doing anyway? A figure appears over Gloria's shadow, so dark you couldn't see in the film. You know, Gloria, although I want to congratulate you on your vivid imagination, you failed to remember one thing. Yeah? What's that? Charlie grins. We always win. Gloria gets pulled by her hair and she begins to scream. The sound of steel hacking away at her head echoes through the phone. Charlie stares calmly and patiently. A sudden crunch and a mysterious figure walks holding her head. God damn it. A mysterious figure walks holding her head in hand and a machete in the other. It's Rocky. Scene skips to when he gets shot at the tracks. Rocky wakes with a deep breath. Charlie runs over to help and helps him up as they both walk away. It hurts. Pick me up. Scene fades and Rocky and Charlie are back at their loft having a whiskey. Rocky is looking at his picture of his daughter. Christian, Christian, me, Charlie, sends a text to Annalisa Reyes that reads, Annalisa, you ready? Come up. Annalisa, Rocky's daughter, walks up the stairs, knocks on the door. Rocky opens the door and sees his daughter standing right there. Hi, Daddy, she says with a nervous and loving stare. The scene cuts black, leading to the end credits. The end. I try to keep it as similar as the movie could be, but... Um, Credits roll. Check us out on your two favorite uncles. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That's the logo. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is the logo. That's right. <laughs> Musazi, Musa, do you want to do your line since you're now here? Abu Bakr? Yeah, I can do that. So you want to do it? Okay, let's see here. Let's see if I can... Um, I think it's page... Uh, I don't know if this will tell me the pages that I'm on. Probably not. Excuse me. I just did a control F and then I searched your uh, Musazi on there. I, can, I think I'm in the 60s, so he'll probably be after 60-something. Probably so. Tom? Uh, 60 something, I think it's, uh, it's still on episode two, so it's midway. Oh, oh, that thing. Oh. Right. Yeah, I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to try to do the, uh, Luganda with you and I'm going to murder it. So we'll see. We'll you see murdered if I everybody remember. and everything else in a movie. I know, might as well mur one. murder the language too. I got it on page 45. Is 45 accurate? It so would probably Mickey's be the same. still doing his job. <laughs> Big brother Mickey. Still doing his job. <laughs> Always on top of it. You've been taking your meds, Mickey? Yes, religiously. Good man. Good man. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see. If um, Tell me when you find it, Abu Bakar. Okay. 
No problem, though. Because I need you to run something else for me, Mickey. There's a place here nearby. They call it a super center. And they've got corn nuts and diet Mary Berry iced teas. Can, you know, you, you know. Let him you know. focus on finding his script, please. <laughs> Mary Berry nuts. You want, me, you want me to run to Walmart for you? Yes, Mickey. That's an important job. <laughs> okay. Got it. Got it covered. No problem, Bob. Do you want me Mama. to take anyone out for you? Yes. I can take care of these Just guys. I can everybody. Take care of these guys. As soon as they look at you and if they smile, especially when they say hi, like just don't chop off one of the hands, chop both. That way they can never wave at you again. They'll just have a nub. All right, let's see here. You have a, a Windows on you, uh, Abu Bakar? Yes, or, I got it. You found it? I found it. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All Just right. like two seconds, I have to go through them to do it. All right, let's see, let's see if I can go through it. Musa Jebaleko. Mbole Wuli Ki Aglebuku Business Yang. Now it's Jebaleko. Jebaleko. And then yours is what? Uh... Where it says see my brother, right? Like it's you it's they were call it's my person. It's me first. Then after I meet you. Say that one more time. Is there a delay on your end? Isn't that funny? Right when it's time. Yeah, I know. Right when it's time. I think he froze. We're gonna get business nunji. I'm gonna go be Gaguado Bulunji. Ayam Bale Nayam Basa Tele Galico Bulunji Neo. Right? No, he can't hear me. Well, I think he's frozen. I think he's frozen. Well, yeah. I'm gonna have to send him this and everybody just say thank you to him for uh, making the attempt for showing up because he's on a whole nother. Um, Whole other time. time. Yeah, so day. this has been fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And seriously, guys, thank you so stinking much for being a part of this project. It, it's meant everything to us uh, to have actors from all over do this. I mean, and I know you guys all. And John jumped in and absolutely rocked it out with his role. You saved the day, bro, because I had like four... Uh, I had four people uh, do wanting to play Mikhail Kuzmich who were... On board, backing out, on board, backing out, on board, backing out. So when you came out, I was like, oh my gosh. And then when you reached out and you were so gung-ho about it, dude, I lost my cool. I was so excited. <clears throat> so I already knew you were going to be on top of your game. And every single one of you were an absolute risk, right? Because I didn't know how it was all going to play out. And I was, you know, this this thing became a thing, a legit thing. So, And we went to a, went to a Waffle House that day, John, man, I felt... Completely protected. <laughs> <laughs> I could say anything. I could throw the bill back to the waitress and she couldn't do a thing. John, you're like what, six foot four? Uh six almost six two, yeah. He's six foot giant. And then with a the Russian accent it helps. So Yeah. Everybody's taller than me, so it was great. What'd you say, bud? Makes you six foot four. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Let's say six foot four. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You could say six foot eleven D nine. I would be that's him. Also, guys, Monday, uh, come Monday, the day after tomorrow. Yeah, we have billboards in Columbus, so we'll have bill billboards all around. And I'm raising money to have billboards put in Atlanta, and I'm going to try to get billboards placed um, for New York, which is probably an impossibility, but we'll see how this thing <laughs> expands. So, um, but thank you, and that's it's your thank you. It's our thank you to you guys for. Uh, for being a part of something so big and, and a lot of people don't realize the, the impact this film really has but what we were able to do with this film during covid when the and john can tell you when the entire industry shut down was pretty yeah. pretty nuts right so hard on a lot of us all a lot of actors that work right you know think things are picking back up and things are insane i'm actually not sleeping anymore good good yay yeah. to insomnia Absolutely. That's awesome. Need to work. 
Two bosses. We yeah, got Sonya like representing the merch. Everybody's representing merch. merch. That's right. Get your yeah, merch. Get the link will be in bio. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for Thank everything. You. Is there anything that anybody wants to say or tell the audience that's going to be watching this? <laughs> Look at Brian with his merch. <laughs> He's got the poster. Yeah, Look, yeah. Here I go with, with my merch. The face. <laughs> I still need my poster, I think. Yeah, I, I've got to send you yours for sure. So. And girl, I promise, once I get back to New York, we'll go for beer nuts. Thanks for finding my daughter online for me. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry about that whole fiasco. I really didn't call that many times. I did call you, but, you know, I let it ring half of once. I was like, oh, she didn't pick up. Let me go do something. You didn't answer. Shame on you. You didn't call Rocky. You didn't call one bit. I did, babe, I did. But, you know, just things happen. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much. Let's stay in touch with everything. And as soon as the billboards are out, I'm going to take selfies. We're actually filming a, a mini short with Hunter and Rocky and, and Mickey uh, for the billboard. So that's going to be funny, too. And then I'm going to just start tagging all of you guys. So You know what? I love you guys. I really do because I've met, well, those that are on, Damn, on the screen now. You have some more latest son. Um, I um, no, I met you guys in person. I loved it. I really did. It was great to meet you guys in person and to work with you. It felt real. You know, we were on the phone, but it was great. I loved every bit of it. John, you are the coolest man. God bless. I know that everything that's anything and great is gonna happen to you, my brother. If it hasn't already, I'm sure it already started. Say that one more time, brother. You were cutting off. Sorry. I said thank you so much. Dude. No, thank no you, problem, brother. Man. It was great, man. Anytime that if ever you have an opportunity, come back or we'll go over there. We'll hang out, man. It'll be great. I'm always around. Perfect. No, and when we're working on new scripts, if you guys want to roll, just hit me up. I got you. I got you, John. I want to work on a script you, where I just play me. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're going to call it out. Christy, thank you. Kellen, thank Christy, you. Christy, nice to see you again. You. BG, thank you. And thank you to everybody watching. We love you guys. And keep pushing the movie. Awesome. And we'll see you later. Take care, guys. Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Love you guys.